fresh haircut, fresh beer, and uh, ah, wait, one sec. And fresh underwear, the most important part of making any YouTube video. Uh, so today, I just want to talk about something very simple. It's uh, my three favorite craft breweries here in the country of South Korea. And uh, I'm going to show off, but this is important for context. Uh, I got my certified beer server certificate. Kevin Grab, Cicerone, there's my... Uh, number there, so you can go verify that on the internet. So I'm not a sommelier level, that's next level, but I do relatively know what I'm talking about. So I have three beers here. Let's talk about my three favorite craft breweries here in Korea. So the first, and this is in no particular order, but I will do it in order of strength of beer, just so you don't know which one's my actual favorite. But this is Magpie. They are some of the OG brewers here in Korea. They've been around about as long as I have, which in the craft beer scene is quite a while. So uh, when I first got here, they would do pop-up shops and they would sell this. You know, someone's having an event and they would come and have their little booth and you, you basically like a catering service. So they would have this, this is the pale ale, and they would have a porter too. Those are their two foundational beers. They've had those since the beginning. And uh, they opened up a little shop in Itaewon and they would sell beer. And uh, they actually made no money on the beer at first. All the profits, well, they made money, but all the profits, the profits were from the sandwiches they would make. All their money went back into ingredients and equipment and know-how on how to make the greatest beer that they could. And that was because there was a drought of craft beer here or any good tasting beer back then. So it was just five guys who were home brewers and they decided, you know, <laughs> you don't want to drink casks when you're having barbecue uh, and we'll do it if we have to. But, you know, I do still miss that kind of American spirit of DIY. If you don't like it, make it yourself, right? So this is their pale ale. And so they've been around quite a long time relative to how long craft beer is in Korea. Uh, they've moved to Jeju, that's where their brewery is now, from their humble days in a little <laughs> building in Itaewon, and then contract brewing out in Gapyong. They now have their own proper facilities out on Jeju-do. I've never been, but I'd love to go one day. And uh, let's talk about what a pale ale is. So a pale ale is a very wide description of beer. Uh, any ale that's a yellowy color, like a blonde ale, or a golden ale, or a pale ale, or an India pale ale, these all fall under the umbrella of a pale ale. So these became very popular after World War One. This is a 4.8% 33 IBU. So 33 IBUs is a bit of bitterness, but it's not gonna not gonna turn people off who don't necessarily enjoy different styles of beer. Uh, they use a light kilned malt, then that lends itself to the name pale. So let's open this thing up. All right, so this is the first beer I'm doing today. So I will teach you how to do a good pour. Simple, simple stuff. 45 degrees, start pouring. And don't worry about the foam. You think, oh, the foam's too much. Once it gets about halfway, turn it up, keep pouring. You're gonna wanna stop, obviously. But a lot of people think like foam is like a uh, waste or anything. All the beer that's in here is in here. You're not losing anything. <laughs> Now, obviously you don't want to shake it up and blow it up everywhere because then it won't be in the glass and you'll lose it, but this is fine. <laughs> this layer protects the beer from oxygen still, whilst, you know, you know, you're drinking it and waiting, you're going to drink a little bit. The more foam that's on there, the more oxygen will not be allowed into your beer. Now, that's a very anal way of looking at it because you're going to be drinking this over the course of half an hour. You're not going to leave it out overnight, but the head is very important. There's a lot of flavor in there, so, ah, oh, like a pine forest, so good. Anyway, bon appetit. Yeah, that's good stuff. I will note that it's 10.45 a.m. on a Saturday. Now, nah, it's a Saturday, so you kind of cut me some slack, but uh, this is a very refreshing drink. It's, it's a nice accessible beer for people in Korea who may not want to go all out on like a very bitter thing. This is a nice intro to like, oh wow, like this isn't just something that I could drink on a hot day. Like there's something here. There's a nice like pineness to it. There's a nice like crackery breadiness to it. It's not sweet. That's why I say cracker and not like a biscuit or bread or anything. It has a nice like multi kind of neutrality like a cracker would. It's nice. I'm gonna finish this. 
Uh, you don't want to watch me drink this whole thing. So I'm going to watch some uh, YouTube cat videos and we'll go on to the next one. All right, let's talk about our second one here. This one's very special. Magpie, as much as I love it, is quite easy to get, especially in Seoul. Good Lord, it's everywhere, which is good, but it's not exactly like a, something that's hard to find and a special treat necessarily. So this second one uh, is from Bud Namu Brewery. That's out in Gangdong, way out on the East Coast. And uh, they basically started this brewery and oh, man, this building's really old. Gorgeous, but it's really old. It's from 1926. Uh, it used to be a Makali brewery, and uh, they have an Australian brewer. So while Magpie is more of an American style, which is great, American craft beer is one of the world's best, uh, this has a, an Australian kind of view, and it's interesting because while he's Australian, one of his main missions in making beer is to kind of wed this fusion between the Korean location that he's in and his knowledge as more of like a Western-minded and being Australian would have a more European-centric, uh, although they are making their own scene, you know, there's a, there's a lineage there that you can trace, obviously. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. Um, it need not be said, especially since I showed you earlier, uh, kind of here, but the, the bottle, I mean, from a simple marketing perspective, which isn't integral to the flavor, but, ah, come on, it, gorgeous. Focus, there you go. Just gorgeous bottle. Gorgeous bottle. So let's open this thing up. And this is their... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I put this up to your face there. I don't know if you can read that. The design really does overshadow the writing on the bottle. But it is the Bud Namu Bekil Hung Red Ale. So this is a red ale. I love like an amber ale. Red ale's great. Um, the Bekil Hung is actually red rice. So that makes this an adjunct beer. Uh, anything that does not exclusively use barley is considered an adjunct. So the addition of rice in here makes that an adjunct ale. And uh, red ales are nice because while the pale ale was kind of clean and a little bit on the bitter side, these ones, these are drinkable all day. They walk that really fine line between bitter and malty, and it's like that burnt sugar caramel kind of sweetness to it that just comes through, and it's great. So... Second beer, I didn't drink the whole first one. <laughs> it's 11 a.m., so I put it in the fridge. I'll have it for lunch, but I do want to continue filming, so here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just has, oh yeah, like the roasting in the malt, because they, you can see because of the color, they roast it more clearly. But uh, here, say hi to Magnier Grandma. The color is great, and it just has that beautiful wedding, like I said. There's that bit of acerbicness right on the back of your tongue, that little bit of bite. But then right down the sides, it has that nice sweetness, caramelly brown sugar mix. Mm. Anyone who says that beer is not as complicated as wine is an idiot. And anyone who says that makgeolli is not as complicated as wine is an even bigger idiot. So, I love red wine, don't get me wrong, but this stuff and all the different kinds, go explore some craft beer places. You know, this beer can be very complicated and it's well worth diving into. And this brings us to our third one. This is the strongest beer, it's uh, 7.2. Uh, so, let me show you what we're talking about. This is from Gorilla Brewing. Now, uh, I've mentioned Seoul and I've mentioned Gangrung. This is another far-flung well, from where I live, uh, Busan. So, as much as Magpie is kind of the OG crew of Seoul, these guys are kind of one of the OG crews in Busan, too, with Galmegi, too. Um, Galmegi is first, and they make good beer, too. But I love Gorilla Beer. Uh, very, very ambitious brews. Uh, they made a Sichuan like peppercorn sour. They've done a King Kong Imperial Stout that was like barrel aged in a whiskey barrel and they put cinnamon in there too. I had that at their brew pub. Whew, I'm not a huge porter stout guy, but man, oh, I've only had one can. I wish I could get another one, but I got it from them down in Busan when I was there a few months ago. It's just, I can't find it. I can't find it up here. So I'll keep looking, but um, yeah, just very ambitious brews. Not afraid to try new weird things. Uh, they make a raspberry wheat too that's really killer. 
Uh, you may be able to tell this is my favorite one by the words I'm using, but hey, I didn't say that. That's just an assumption you made. Uh, they also, interestingly, have a hop farm and they grow six different kinds there, which is cool because hops are something that a lot of people aren't growing in Korea necessarily. I know of a few hop farms. There's two I know of, uh, which, you know, doesn't mean there are two, but you get the idea. And uh, yeah, just very, very, very forward thinking and cool ideas going into these beers. And if you're ever in Busan, go to their Gwangali location. They have one in Hyundai. There's nothing wrong with it. But the Gwangali location is their flagship kind of headquarters one. <sighs> Long, wide tables, second floor. Uh, just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome place to have lunch or dinner and grab some beers and some glasses. So uh, this is their Newing IPA, which would make this a New England IPA. Uh, or called a hazy IPA or a juicy IPA. And what makes this IPA different from a regular IPA is there's a lot more of the proteins from the barley that are left in, which results in this like really haze kind of like, you know, the pale ale I had, the first one was quite, it's yellow and it's not see-through necessarily, but there's no cloudiness to it. This one, when I pour it, you're going to see, man, <laughs> yeah, there's, you can't see anything through it, even if you put a light up to it. And uh, what makes it a juicy is very interesting. The hops are not put in when they boil. Now, if you put the hops in when you boil your mash, it lets a lot of the astringent bitterness compounds out of the hops, which I like. There's nothing wrong with that. A bitter beer can be really, really pleasant. However, what they do with the hops is they don't put them in till days and days and days later when there's the fermentation process going on. So, what happens is all these nice fruity esters, they're called, and a lot of the compounds in the hops that you'd boil out don't get boiled out. They seep right out into the brew, and they result in these super nice, like, tropical fruit, like pineapple, mango, like, citrusy, like, real, real, like, obvious ones, too. This isn't subtle. So, um, this is one of my favorite beers from the last six months that I've had. It's just killer. This is probably my fourth can since I had my first one. Again, not the easiest to find unless you're at like a pretty specific bottle shop, but well worth trying. So I will not pour this here because I have to finish the other two. It's Chusok. We're going to my in-law's house. So I will be drinking this at the farm later and uh, I will be back with an update on the pour and you can watch and how I feel about the taste. And I hope, I hope I have a bonus scene where I give my mother-in-law some of my homemade makgeolli and, well, that's the easy part. And she enjoys it. That's the hard part. Hi, everyone. We're at the farm. So uh, I'm going to open my last beer and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. So we'll do the classic pour. Yeah, if I can... Yep, here we go. And like I said earlier, you can see this beer is a lot like milkier and thicker. And those are all the proteins that are left from the barley. So let's uh, have a happy chew sock. Enjoy my favorite beer. Perfect. It has like a viscosity of orange juice. It doesn't have that like tart sour of the orange, but that thick kind of like mouthfeel going down your throat. Oh. And that's why they call it a juicy IPA. All right, so here I am with my lovely mother-in-law. Uh, Chuseok jeolboneseyo. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> so. Oh, comes on, Nida. Jinchayo? Oi! She said it's kind of strong. Maybe we can get a TV show on KBS.